BioBalance HealthCast episode 248, Losing Your Life to Save the Cost of a Starbucks a Day. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Sometimes priorities are things that we need to think about consciously and deliberately. We prioritize things reflexively, automatically, in the background of our life. Life goes on, but we're moving sort of like lemmings toward the cliff. We're just moving (laughs) in a general globalized direction. And it might make us more efficient. It might make us happier. It might make us more successful if we sometimes stop and think. Mm -hmm. That would be nice. That would be nice. And stop and think about what we're doing and why we're doing it. And say, what's the most important thing to me? And put that at the top. Right. And then, and I actually have to write lists. I actually have to put it on paper to say, these are my priorities. And I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to do these three by yeah. next week. Yeah. And these three, I'm going to finish by next month. Yeah. And so, and then line them up. And then over time, things start kind of coming in that are higher priority. But you should always keep at the very top of your priority, your health. Because without your health... Nothing else matters. No. And, uh, like Dr. Phil says, you know, how's that working for you? Uh, people sometimes will articulate, oh, I'm doing this for this reason. Mm-hmm. And they haven't necessarily examined. The reason is a, is a good reason. It's a mm-hmm. plausible reason. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one they like to think about. They haven't necessarily thought about whether or not you know, what, you're, what you're doing is really what you think you're doing. An right. example that came up, the reason mm-hmm. we started to have this conversation, is you were at a, a party and you ran into someone that used to be a patient of yours. Mm -hmm. And when they came to see you, they presented with certain complaints and illnesses Mm -hmm. and problems. You treated them, they got better. All of that stuff went away. All that stuff went away. They never felt better. And eventually they stopped coming and you lost track of them. Mm -hmm. So you ran into them at the party and all of that stuff was back. And they were Mm -hmm. feeling miserable. They They had put on weight. They were not healthy. But they were focused on communicating to you that all this had happened because they were saving money to send their child to college. And that meant they couldn't spend money on their own health. Right. And so they were unhealthy and miserable. But more than that, the, the, the real bottom line is they spent tons more money on their health mm-hmm. because they didn't do the pellets. So... This patient said to so me. So how do you feel? So, that? Tell me. So I well, I just I just said, How are you? Yeah. And I could tell she wasn't well. I could see she she was her her walk was with pain. I, she was swollen. She had gained all of her weight you back. Her balance was tender. Her balance she was, was yeah, she was kind of like walking like she was in pain, but it's kind of almost a waddle kind of mm-hmm. walking and we were talking and she she kept saying you know it's it's because of the money i didn't come back and so then i said well so so what happened she said i've never felt better than when i was on the pellets i said that's mm-hmm. awesome she said all of my symptoms went away and then i i looked at her and i said so when you stopped did they come back yeah. and she said well <laughs> i said so so tell me about your tell me about you know why you look like you're in pain mm-hmm. And she said, well, I have an autoimmune disorder that caused me to have arthritic kind of pain. And that has come back just like it was before. And now I'm seeing two doctors for it. In fact, I had to go to three opinions in the last two years. I am on three drugs that I had gone off of and and was fine with that when I was on the pellet. So so I've gone, I, I'm back on those drugs and I'm seeing these different specialists and they still can't get it right. Well, and so I went... In my mind, I'm going copay, 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 and right. copay for the drug, copay for the drug, copay for the drug. Every single month was much more than what she paid for the pellets. Plus the time, the cost of time off work to go oh, see yeah. the doctor. And some doctors, not you, have banker's hours. And if you work <laughs> a real job, you can't yeah. get in to see. That's true. They just work during yeah. the day. So, so, but then I, then I, you know, I asked her. I said, so. In my mind, I'm thinking this, and I'm going. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything well, yeah, it's not, because it's not my job. Yeah. And we're at a party; it's a social event. And so, right. so I asked her about something else, and she said, 
well, I also have GYN problems. So she's telling me all these things. She said, well, I didn't. I said, did you have that when you were with me? Because I don't remember that yeah. problem. She said, no, I didn't. It went away when I was on the pellets. So she's telling me each thing went away, went away. And, and she's seen two specialists at our university hospitals. Mm -hmm. And she's been given prescriptions for steroids and Crisco and all kinds of things for her bottom. She can't yeah, sit you down. Have a prescription for Crisco, you can't just go to the store and get it. Well, no, she didn't get a prescription for Crisco. <laughs> she was told to use Crisco and two prescription drugs. And then, you know, and so I'm I'm listening and I'm going, ow. And yeah. she's and, and she said, and I haven't had sex for years. And I went, Oh, great. So so I didn't so I didn't put it up together for her right. and she didn't put it together. For herself. She's telling me all this. I'm doing very little talking. It's just in my mind that I'm thinking, how terrible to have all of these things wrong with you. Yeah. And if you, I went to her checkbook, I could add up that she's probably spending three times as much as she ever spent on pellets. Well but people don't see And her see quality that. of life was good. If they have insurance, third party payment insurance mm -hmm. and they have to pay the copay. And they Deductibles go, they, are huge now, so you pay everything. You still don't see it the same way. You go in and you pay whatever that is, $10, $30, $100. You don't go in and pay $1,000. If you, the Somebody's paying the 1000 but it's the, quote, insurance company. Well, you pay the deductible, which means I, you pay everything. Like if you do lab work, instead of just paying a copay of right. twenty five, you pay Two thousand dollars if the lab works in your in your deductible. Yes. You haven't satisfied your deductible, so you are paying that yes. for but that they, year. But they don't see it that way. They don't see it as a package cost. They they see it as, oh, my doctor told me to get these tests, I'm gonna go get these tests. And then they get a bill and they pay that bill. And then they say, mm -hmm. I got this prescription. So they go and they make the mm -hmm. copay and they get the prescription. They don't see it as a one time cost or as mm -hmm. a total dollar cost. Mm -hmm. Uh if they did, if they were able to add those things up and see it, they could do what what we call a cost benefit mm -hmm. ratio. Just it, so, so cost benefit ratio. Every choice that you make costs, something. and every or choice that you something. make pays. Mm -hmm. and so a question about life choices be, has to be: Are your choices worth what they cost? Right. And in the terms of this lady's mm -hmm. example, you would argue that her choice to save money to send her son to college is a good thing. Yeah, but it's a good thing. is it worth what it's costing her in terms of its impact on her own personal health, mm -hmm. her lifespan, her quality of life, uh, her weight, and her pocketbook? And her time. And her, and her time. And your answer would be, obviously not. Right. And actually, her answer would be, obviously not, if she could step aside and listen to herself when she describes mm -hmm. how she felt when she was on the pellets mm -hmm. and how she feels now that she's not on the pellets. Mm -hmm. But there's a filter in place, and the, and the filter for her is, I'm doing this good selfless thing mm -hmm. of denying my own health care and my own quality of life and sex and happiness in my relationship mm -hmm. with my husband. All that's on the table as a cost in service of the goal of being able to send my child to college. But the goal is not going to be reached if she's spending all her money on all this other stuff. I, I agree with you. How do you get mm -hmm. her to see that? And obviously, in this example, in this, you don't. I don't. Because you're at a party, and she's and not your patient, and she's that's not my not patient your anymore. With her. Yeah. So I just listened so, do to her. You want to slap her and just say, <laughs> "Duh." No. You know? No, I just felt so sorry for her. I thought I kept thinking, "Yeah, what can I do to get her to feel better?" Rather than you know leave her in this abyss because she was miserable. I mean, she was miserable. She was, and she's going to three or four doctors, <laughs> different labs, different tests, different treatments, and all of those cost money and time mm -hmm. and an investment, and none of them seem to be making a difference. They're not working. They, they give her palliative treatments. Use Crisco. Yeah. You're having problems with lubrication. You say right. your sex is painful. You don't have sex. You're having mm -hmm. problems with desire. Well, that just happens. Yeah. And so that just not happens. You just have to suck it up and go with it. And so then you say, you say to her, or I would say to her, well, how about when you were on the pellets? Did you have lubrication problems? Oh, no. Did you have sexual desire? Oh, yes. Were you able to have sex? Was it good? Yeah. Well, what happened? Well, I quit getting the pellets. Why? Well, because I needed to save money to send my kid to school. So your pain 
and your lack of sexuality and the fact that your husband has had an affair with his secretary. Oh, now that is not in this picture no, that I know of. That's not your example, but it would no, be No, this mine. isn't my example. No, no, we're not talking about this particular individual. <laughs> yeah, we're not. <laughs> but those arguments about costs that you don't attend to, that you don't recognize or associate with an event, mm -hmm. these things happen for these reasons. So then, as Dr. Phil would say, how is that working for you? You know, are you making a good balancing choice? So I, I want to ask the people who right. have multiple problems that all could be related to or started with, not and are related to, a low testosterone or low estrogen level right. that began when that went when those two hormones dropped to a critical level or went away. Mm -hmm. I want to ask: Are all these symptoms? And what you're doing for those symptoms worth not just trying, and you can just try it, pellets, which are, you know, a $500, 550 three times a year thing, mm -hmm. which will be less expensive than all this other stuff. But in your mind, it may not. But see what that's worth for you. And what did we decide? It was a, it was a large, it was a, what no, like a large Bente, Starbucks a day. Starbucks yeah. a day. So, so when, is that worth your health? Well, I mean, for and me. And your quality of life. And your quality of the, life. I mean, the relationship issues around good, a good sex life are critical. They are. And if you're not feeling well, if you're not, if, if it's painful and you don't feel a matching level of desire, you can go through the motions, mm -hmm. but. But your partner knows. And that also, and that <laughs> they also know it. They feel it. They don't impute motive to that, that you're in pain. They impute that you're not interested or you don't, you don't like love anymore. them anymore mm -hmm. or you're punishing them with, by withholding sex. It, it doesn't occur to them that you're in pain. Partly because you're not saying it. But right. Partial, and, yeah. and, and secondarily, then, mm -hmm. be, well, well, why don't you do something about it? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying these lubrications. I'm trying Crisco. I'm trying whatever. As long as you go to the doctor, then you can say you're still trying, whether it's doctor. working or not. So the the issue is, do you, how much is it worth? And and I'm not trying to just so downplay do. yeah. that cost. I'm just trying to put it in perspective. Right. With we use so many things over the counter. We use so many things on the internet. We you know we buy so much stuff just mindlessly on Amazon. You know, and, and we're trying to make our lives feel better. Yeah, you throw away five hundred dollars faster than you realize. Right. And you so know, so is that is it you, what's you can your life Starbucks for? every day for a month and have five hundred dollars. Right. You know, or, or three months or whatever the whatever but, the dollar factors are. Uh, one of the one of the things though that I want to talk about that contributes to this conversation is a psychological concept called sensory adaptation. Mm -hmm. uh, you have four sensors at the skin level, cutaneous sensors in your body. Uh, hot, cold, touch and pain. And there are saturation points around your skin that send those signals into your body to say, oh, this feels cold, this feels warm, mm -hmm. that hurts. Uh, and one of the reasons we rub a place, like if, if you get a sting or you bump your hand on the table and it hurts and pain signals come from there, and you rub that, is because you are saturating all the sensors that are in that area. For touch. So you overload the message center of the brain so that that point that hurt gets lost in the noise. Mm -hmm. And so... If you, uh, when I used to teach psychology in, in high school, we did an experiment. We'd take a, a pan of ice cold water and a pan of warm water and have them put their hand in each mm -hmm. one. And when they put their hand in the cold water, it would feel cold. They put their hand in the warm water, it would feel hot. Then they take both of their hands and put them in a room temperature pan that was the same temperature, mm -hmm. and each hand would still feel different. Right. Because the sensors adapt and reset to zero under constant stimulation. If you wear glasses, if you wear socks, and I used to you know, give this as an example. If you have socks on right now, when you put them on this morning, you could feel yourself put them on. You could feel them go over the skin of your feet. Mm -hmm. You could feel the mm -hmm. bend, the elastic around your ankle. Can you feel it now? Uh -uh. No, because those sensors that say there's something touching me have reset to zero. Uh -huh. So if there's not a change, then you don't receive right. a stimulation message. So you don't know that something's wrong. So that happens when people come to see you. Yeah. They come in and they're in pain, and th th this hurts. And you massage that with mm -hmm. the right medicines; it stops hurting. So then they're like, "Well, that didn't do anything." 
you know, and they forget that they were in pain. They forget they, they forget were in pain or that they like didn't sleep or that not they... Not to bounce out of bed in the morning and be alert, not to be able to stand upright and walk. You know, you, you unfold. My wife is a great example of this. My <laughs> wife went to Kathy years back to get pellets. And she still does. And, <laughs> and before she went to get pellets, when she would get out of bed in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, she would have to unfold. It would creak and it would move and it would be slow and it would be painful and arthritic. And she'd stagger into the bathroom. And after she came to see you to get the pellets, it, two, three weeks had gone by, and she woke me up in the middle of the night. She said, did you see that? And I'm sound asleep, and the room is dark, and I'm like, see what? You're like, because we've had spider alerts in the middle of the night, that kind of stuff. So I'm like, what? And she said, I just got up. She just stood and up. Said, <laughs> and she didn't have to unfold, and it didn't hurt, and, and it like, wasn't and awkward, and she that. wasn't unbalanced and staggering. And she still just gets up now. Mm-hmm. So when you have that, it resets. Mm -hmm. And so now she this expects that. That's the norm. I just get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night or, or get up off the couch and move to the kitchen or wherever she's doing. If she stopped taking pellets, a new adaptation would occur. Mm -hmm. A new normal would occur. And that new normal would be the old condition. You know, right. people go back to what issues they had. And your brain adapts the same way. And your brain adapts so the same way. So your memory doesn't, rem you don't remember, this is kind of an adaptation that, right. you know, That's thank God, point. God gave it to us, that we, we you know, if we're in pain over time, mm -hmm. we don't pay attention it's to it until it's severe. Yeah. But if we feel better, we forget we were ever in pain. Because that's right. why I have my patients fill out their questionnaire themselves. Thing. Because as they're filling it out, you know, the next visit, three months later, I'll say, okay, so I'm going to go over all the symptoms that you had when you came to me. And I want you to tell me if they're all better, a little better. It helps me with treatment and, and what I need to treat. And so I go through these, and usually when I get to joint pain, they go, I never had joint pain. I'm yeah. like, really? Because you marked it here. Yeah. yeah. So... Oh yeah, I had trouble walking. I try. I my hands are. Oh yeah, I remember that. But, but that's what happens with many of the symptoms. Fatigue can be one of them. People get used to having this amount of energy, so their energy gets better. Right. And so then, at first, they say, "Yeah, my fatigue's gone," and then they start doing more. Right. And then they're fatigued again, and they go, "It's not working anymore." <laughs> you know. So so that's a matter of adaptation. Because they've taken on more things, they have more energy, then because of that, they are now like, it's not working. So so I'm like, so don't take it for, don't do it, wait for two months. And they come back in going, oh my God, it's all back, I need, you know. They wait more than the four months, they're back because it all comes back. I know that, that you have another line of business that you do, that you have an aesthetics mm -hmm. practice too. And you help people look better to try to match what they feel like. Mm -hmm. And in that end of the practice, you often take photographs of them when they come in and mm -hmm. as their progression occurs. I have suggested that you ought to take photographs of people that come in for pellets mm -hmm. because they come in and, and they, they look old, they look bedraggled, they look uh, it, it They don't care what they have on, their hair's a mess, they aren't taking care of themselves because, Sometimes I mean, this is not everybody, No, but this is the majority and they can barely get in the door right. and then when they come back they look like somebody different so we do take before pictures what we need is the after picture yes okay and we only take so the before pictures just so that i'm not that great with like last names so i need to have the picture i'm good right. with faces but not names well and you know in our book the secret female hormone that describes all of the stuff in more expansive details we talk about asking the question, you know, if, if you don't do these things to take care of yourself, this woman is not doing these things and her health is deteriorating, her quality of life is degenerating. At the end of the day, if she's in a wheelchair, if she's on a walker, if she's in a residential facility at 75 because she physically can't Or earlier because she's now 55. Or, or earlier, what would she pay to not be in a wheelchair? What would she pay to be able to walk upright, to go get in a car and sit down and not take 10 minutes and have to think about each step and calculate her balance and struggle with the pain in her joints? If you had those conditions, what would you pay to get rid of them? I mean, most people would pay anything. I know I would. Mm -hmm. But at the time when you're making selective decisions today, do I put this $100 
in my son's college education fund or do I put it towards my ability to walk when I'm 70? We tend to take the short-term decision. We tend to take right. the most immediate decision and the less selfish decision and do something that's good for somebody else. But in, in reality, right. they're really not making that choice. If they have other medical illnesses right. and other problems and they're taking other drugs... And this can stop. So it's a false choice. It's a false choice. Yes. It's not a real choice of dollar to dollar. Right. I, I mean, we've done that with people, you know, who you wouldn't see out. it. And we'd add all the things that they were spending. And then they go, oh, my God, I didn't even know I was spending that. When I used to be in sales years ago, and they were teaching us how to sell a product, there were, there were several things that they taught us. One is always ask for the sale. Will you buy this? If I don't ask you, you just smile and let me leave. Uh, but the other one was, if we're struggling... For you to make this decision, can I help you make this decision? Mm -hmm. And and they they taught us to use what they call the Ben Franklin close to close the sale. They they say what you say is Ben Franklin had a way to make decisions whenever he was on the the balancing point, mm -hmm. trying to decide yes or no, stay or go. And then he would take a piece of paper. Oh, I've done that. Divide it in half. Tons. Put yes and no mm -hmm. reasons to do it, reasons not to do it. And of course, if I'm a trained salesman for my product line. Mm -hmm. And I know all the reasons why you ought to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm helping you come up with the four list. I mm -hmm. said, so let's just write all these down. You know, you could do this because you have that and you have this and you have this and you have mm -hmm. this. And so these are all reasons to do it. Now let's think about reasons that you shouldn't do it. And then I'm supposed to shut up and just look at you. And you come up with one or two or three. So here's a list of 20 and a list of three. <laughs> Decision. That sounds like manipulation, it's, uh, it and is. I don't. It's I don't sales. use. I don't use. No, you that. don't. I know, but that's not something I would do with a patient because it's their. It's to my benefit that they feel better. That's my goal. My goal is that they feel better. Right. It's not. And you're not that uh, I sell another pellet. That's not, not the goal. The you're goal not is I'm not hustling. I'm trying to help them get better. Right. And I'm trying to help them see through their pain or their apathy or their fatigue. But but to if, give them a. a, a a view now if they if don't have any problems used honestly right if it was used honestly then it, then it makes sense make decisions if exactly. i mean we can use it dishonestly we can use it manipulatively right. and that's what i was trained to do mm -hmm. but <laughs> if you use it honestly mm -hmm. it can help people make decisions to clarify their thinking to look mm -hmm. at the cost in terms of other doctor visits other medical costs mm -hmm. loss of quality of life loss of sex drive loss of ability to walk increase in arthritis uh, uh, increase in weight. Inability all, all to think. Of the, Many of my patients without testosterone and estrogen can't think. Yeah. I mean, what does that cost? Yeah. Because you can't really hold a job if you can't think. So. so, our point today is that when we make decisions, we prioritize. Prioritize. We make choices. Our ability to make choices is important and we need to stop and think about it. And we need to think about it in, in concrete, real terms. Uh, and we tend not to. We tend mm -hmm. to just make a reflexive decision mm -hmm. or a guided decision. An emotional decision. An emotional decision, which isn't always the best decision. So again, one last time, how's that working for you? Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BiobalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at BrettNewcomb.com.